welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a second, closer look at the event loop. This is one of the most important parts of the node runtime. Why is it so important? The event loop is responsible for handling all those callback functions in your node programs. Those callback functions which allow Node to execute code asynchronously. It's this event loop that allows your Node program to do multiple things all at once, even though JavaScript is a single-threaded language. So how exactly does the event loop work? What does it look like? When you start executing some program, using the node runtime, a piece of code starts running. This piece of code is a loop inside of libuv. That loop is called the event loop. You guessed it. This event loop, like every event loop, is a piece of code that looks something like this. We have a while loop that runs as long as some condition is true. For the event loop, it checks if the node process should exit. And if the process shouldn't exit, so say some flag should exit is false, our event loop calls a function to process events that have been sent to the event loop something like process events. So our loop checks if your code is done executing and the node process should exit. And if not, it processes all the events, all the callback functions that are called by your node program. If there's no events, the function here waits until there is one. It waits until your program triggers one of those callback functions, at which point it will execute that function, passing off any hard work to the operating system or to that thread pool. When it's done processing all the events that it currently has, it'll start all over again. That's it. This loop runs while Node is running. And processes all the events happening in your node programs. Now, the code you see here isn't exactly the event loop code that node uses. The actual loop lives in libuv and is implemented in the C programming language, not in JavaScript. But it follows the same logic that we see here processing all your asynchronous callbacks until Node is ready to exit, when there's no more code for Node to run. All right, now that we're aware what an event loop looks like, there's only one piece that's missing. How does the event loop process events? What does Node's process events function do? And what kinds of events does it actually handle? Let's find out in the next video. I'll see you soon. Welcome back. We now know that the event loop is a piece of code in libuv that processes asynchronous events. It handles our asynchronous code going through any relevant asynchronous callback functions in a loop. Node automatically enters this loop when it starts executing your code, and it exits automatically when there are no more functions to perform. So what exactly happens when the event loop processes events? When Node executes an asynchronous function, say set timeout or our file system function to read a file on our machine, 
that operation is sent off to be executed in the background. As we've learned, this operation is executed in our operating system or on the thread pool. When that operation finishes and the result is ready, Node places any callback functions that it needs to run for that operation onto a queue. Say our asynchronous operation was this set timeout that waits for one second before attempting to call a callback that we're going to call callback one. What happens is that when this timer expires, when one second has passed, our callback is added to this queue to be executed as soon as possible. This is true for any callback that you've set to be run when some asynchronous operation completes. These callbacks are put on something called a callback queue. This callback queue keeps track of which callbacks are ready to be executed. Any new callback functions are pushed onto the queue in this order. So another set timeout that completes immediately after our first one would add its callback immediately after. And if we had a third operation complete with a third callback ready to execute, its callback might be added to the queue as well. So new callbacks are added in this direction from the bottom and they're removed from the queue. They're executed from the top in this order with callback one being executed before callback two. This is what's known as a first in first out queue. The first function to be put in, callback one, is the first to be executed because it was the first one to be pushed into that queue. This queue is like a waiting area for our callbacks where the oldest function, the one that's been waiting longest, will be the one to get processed by our event loop first when it has a chance. We use this queue system so that all your callback functions get a fair chance to be executed in a reasonable amount of time without interrupting each other. There we go. I've probably said callback and queue a million times in the past couple minutes, but the next video is going to be a really good one. Let's find out exactly how the event loop uses this idea of a callback queue. Oh, and by the way, you may have heard the term event queue or message queue being thrown around in the context of the event loop. These are just different names that refer to the same thing. They all refer to this idea of a queue of callbacks. All right, on to the next video. Let's continue our investigation into how the event loop processes events. We've learned that when you pass a callback into a function like set timeout, when that timer completes, the callback gets put on something called a callback queue or event queue to be executed at a later time. Now, what does the event loop do with our queue of callbacks? Well, I'll let you in on a secret. There's no one callback queue. We do have queues of callbacks that keep track of which tasks need to be run, but if you look deep into the workings of the event loop, you'll see there's actually several different cues.
each one handles a different phase of the event loop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this phase idea that I just introduced? Each phase of the event loop is responsible for different types of operations. There's four main phases of the event loop. Each of these stages is responsible for a different category of operations that the event loop processes. There's one for timers, one for input-output events, one for set-immediate, and one for close callbacks. Each of these phases has their own queue of callbacks that are executed during that phase. A callback for set timeout would go on the timer queue, while a callback for a file system operation, well, that's input output, so it would go on the IO queue, which is responsible for all asynchronous input output operations. This IO queue is also known as the poll queue. We'll go through each of these phases in just a second. But before we get there, we need to understand this concept of timers. There's three types of timers that we have in Node. You might have seen some of these. We have set timeout, we have set interval, and we have set immediate. We've already seen set timeout in action, and set interval is very similar, except it sets a function to be executed many times repeatedly, with function calls separated by a minimum of the delay that you pass in as a parameter. Rather than executing your callback once, like set timeout, set interval loops that function on an interval. Set immediate is a special kind of timer. It sets the callback that you pass in to be executed as soon as possible on the event loop. In theory, this means it's going to be executed immediately. But the truth is, set immediate isn't so immediate. We'll really see this by visualizing the different phases of the event loop. Let's find out how the event loop flows through all of its different phases. When the event loop first starts executing, on the first iteration of our loop, the first phase starts getting processed. The event loop begins by going through all of our timer callbacks. These are callbacks that were passed into set timeout and set interval. The event loop goes through the timer's callback queue and checks if there's any functions for it to execute. Functions for timers that have completed. Once it's processed all of the functions in the timers phase, it moves on to the next phase. We're still in the first iteration of the event loop, or what we call the first tick of the event loop, and we're now dealing with all of our input output callbacks. This is the majority of all your callbacks in a real life node application. It includes things like all your network and file operations, but basically anything that doesn't fit in the other phases goes here. So if your code is done reading a file, the callback for that read operation will be pushed onto the IO phase callback queue and it will be executed in this phase. Next up, we have the set immediate phase. Remember, set immediate 
is a special kind of timer, like set timeout and set interval, that instead executes after the I.O. phase. As you can see, functions passed into set immediate actually execute after those passed into timers, like, for example, set timeout. It's called set immediate because it runs immediately after any I.O. operations have finished executing and before another cycle of the event loop starts. Before we move on to that next tick, there's one more phase, the close callbacks phase. This is for when you close a file or a network connection and you have a callback that executes when that connection is closed. That's what goes in this last phase. When all of the closed callbacks have been processed, the event loop cycle begins again. And it goes through this list of different functions that it needs to execute. So it first checks the timers, asking, are there any timer callback functions to execute? If yes, it runs them. And when it's done, it asks the I.O. callback queue, are there any functions for me to execute? Does the callback queue for this phase have something for me to process? If not, or once it's done processing, it moves on to the next phase, and so on, until we start a new tick of that event loop. Now, there are a couple of other phases in the event loop like the idle and prepare phase, but that's only used internally by Node. Our JavaScript can't do any operations there, so these phases aren't really important to us. The four phases we see here are those that really capture the behavior of the event loop and how it interacts with JavaScript. By going through all these different types of functions in the different queues, the event loop makes sure that all the functions that make up your asynchronous node programs eventually execute. And that's it. Node combines this event loop along with the V8 engine and libuv to bring JavaScript to the server, allowing us to create all the websites and servers and applications that we can possibly imagine.